Wolfgang. Hello, oh, Wolfgang. Hi, Wolfgang. Uh, and uh, my partner in London, so... Well, also, good morning, Holly Johnson. <laughs> good morning, Welcome. both hi. of you, John and Sally. Oh, hi. It's great <laughs> to have you here. What is it like walking around an exhibition about yourself? Uh, it's a bit surreal, <laughs> but it, it's fantastic. They've done a really good job. I, I wasn't involved particularly in the design of it, or uh, I just loaned a few items to them for it. Um, but my friend James Lawler of Duo Vision Arts put it all together with the Homotopia and the Museum of Liverpool, and it was funded by the N National Heritage Lottery. And it's very much um, my life and my work that I've done and through an LGBT lens in, in a sense and it's extremely colourful and I found myself quite interesting. <laughs> and, but also I suppose if you go and check your own exhibition, they can't make any mistakes, can they? They can't make stuff up about you. No, they can't make stuff up about you, no. that's. So everything no, no. is accurate and it's your actual story because over the years I bet there's been some corkers of Yeah, myths, it's newspapers really that make things up and, uh, you know, those newspapers we don't read. And <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, legends sort of perpetuate themselves, don't they? So do you feel like you can kind of take a bit of control over that legend in a way by doing the exhibition that you can put your stamp on your life, your story? Well, I wrote a book, A Bone in My Flute, years ago in order to put my stamp on my story. Um, and they did use that as source material for the exhibition. And uh, the theme of it is Make Love Your Goal, which is a line from The Power of, course, of Love. Of and I, I really like that. That was their idea. Uh, and. You know, you can't go wrong with love, really. Well, I'm, I'm you? liking your, your Frankie-style T-shirt. you still got the T-shirt. Yes, this is cho a Choose Love T-shirt. Can you believe, Holly, that you're sitting here on the breakfast sofa with like, Frankie Say Relax everywhere and all of this branding around us when there was a time when you weren't particularly welcome on BBC One? Well, um, I suppose so. The, they banned Relax, didn't they? And, but then they unbanned it again for Christmas Top of the Pops in 1984 and got us to perform it after we'd had three number ones in that year with uh, Relax Two Tribes and The Power of Love. So um, then there was Band-Aid on Christmas Top of the Pops. It was an amazing year for pop music, 1984. And it's a great legacy for me to go and perform which I'm doing next year in June. Tickets are on sale on Friday morning at 9.30. Oh, do we have to get in a queue? How's that going to work? I, I don't know. Go to the, uh, hollyjohnson.com and all the details are there, apparently. Well, what do you think, 40 years on after these pictures, you know, as you prepare to go on tour again in 2024, 25, I mean, what, what do you think of the music industry today and the change of those 40 years? Uh, I don't get it really but I'm not supposed to uh, I'm not what don't you get well I don't get the whole streaming thing oh god we, we used to sell records and be able to earn a living but now everyone listens to our music for free and that unless you can perform you can't actually earn a living from music it's all about the tours uh, isn't it? it is all about tours and merchandise and things like that. I, it, it must be difficult for new young people getting into the industry because record sales alone just won't cut it to keep a band going and they need other streams. So can you understand why Oasis have decided to go back out on the road, perhaps? Oh, I can understand absolutely, yeah. Especially if you've had a bit of a divorce, you, you know, and you want to replenish your reserves, I suppose. But it's been controversial, hasn't it? All the dynamic pricing and the queuing for tickets and all of that. What did you make of that? Because well, that don't, wouldn't have happened 40 years ago. I don't ago. actually understand the mechanics of that, um, so I, I can't really answer that question because I, I don't understand it. If, if I want a ticket for something, I usually ring them up and ask politely. <laughs> we can't all do that, though. No, I know, but I don't understand. 
these Ticketmaster things and, you know, websites and I, I'm not great at that, that sort of thing. I'm good at internet shopping. <laughs> But <laughs> it's the same thing. You just need to internet shop for a ticket. Yeah, I it suppose is. it is, but I, I've never done it, to be honest. I love that. I'll go to the theatre uh, to yes. say, I want, want two tickets to Liza Minnelli, please, which yes. I did when I saw David Bowie when I was 13. I went to the Empire Theatre in Liverpool wow. and asked, um, you know, for tickets. I've got visions of you turning up at Wembley Stadium at the box office next summer <laughs> asking for tickets for Oasis. I reckon you'd get in as well. I think he would. Yeah. I, I'll ask Cara, <laughs> who does the ask PR Cara. for SJM. Yes, That's there what we go. I would do. Okay. Everyone, we can ask Cara. Yeah. It's fine. Holly's got another. We'll all be fine. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming in. Oh, thank you. Fantastic.